believe that Jesus is God. Right, right. And that he alone is the only one who can meet mankind's every need. These places, family, are special places. These are precious places. These are places of great faith. And it's good when you have places like this around or countries like this because it tells us that God is yet wanted and yet needed. Yes, sir. It's a good thing when the people of God yet recognize the need for God. Uh -huh. And it's a good thing when people who have been blessed by our Father are still grateful for the blessings that God has given them. Right about, right about. And today we get to see such a region. It was a region that longed to see Jesus coming. You know this region. It's called Galilee. And it was a region that believed that Jesus was the answer for the world today. Right. And I'm happy about this because at the end of this great chapter, Jesus is on board the ship with his disciples. And only after walking across the sea at the fourth watch of the night and calming the storm, do they recognize who he is. Right. On last week we talked about this. When he spoke to them, the Bible says that the winds ceased and he stepped into the boat. Amen? Yes, and then their eyes became open and they didn't know who Jesus was because of the hardness of their hearts. Right, right. Y'all remember that? Mm -hmm. Well, after they had Jesus stepped into the boat, the Bible says, and immediately they arrived at the shore. And that's where our text opens up today. He has reached this region, this new region. And some powerful things are going to happen here. I notice, first of all, in the text, for our background information, in verse 53, the Bible says that when they had crossed over, they landed at the Nazareth. Now watch this, very interesting word. The Bible says, and he anchored there. Let me see if I can unpack this. In verse 45, he told the disciples to get into the boat without him and go over to Bethsaida. Right. But in verse 53, when they land, they're in Gennesaret. Are you with me? Something happened. From the time they left shore from the eastern side and arrived on the western side. Now, hypothetically speaking, we can blame it on the wind. <laughs> Maybe it blew them off course. But I know Jesus and I know better than that. All right. All right. All right. Well, what's happening in this text? Let me see if I can unpack it for you. These are both important places in what the Master is going to do in the disciples' journey. Bethsaida is best known or called the house of fishes. And it's the house of fishes because it was notorious for being a seafaring community. In other words, most of everybody that lived in this little town or village made their living out on the sea. It was the house of Peter and his brother Andrew. Right, right. James and John also lived there, and we know from their occupation that they were fishermen. Mm -hmm. Jesus says to them, I want y'all to get in the boat and go back home, and I'm going to meet you on the other side. Are you with me here? But notice this. When they arrive, he does not land in Bethsaida, neither does he anchor in Bethsaida. He doesn't even land in Gennesaret, but he anchors in Gennesaret. Can I turn the lights on right here? Gennesaret was a little bitty village about a mile off of the sea. And it was uh, known for its crescent shape. If you've ever seen a half moon, that's the way Gennesaret was shaped. So that it really wasn't a seafaring community because it was a mile off of the lake. Right. But on one point of the crescent was uh, Bethsaida and on the other point was Capernaum. Okay. And in the middle was Gennesaret. Mm -hmm. Can I keep going for you right here? Mm -hmm. Gennesaret was known for being an agricultural city. All right. It was a city where they grew figs and olives and 
palms and a variety of other types of trees were grown because of its rich soil. Commentators call the Nazareth the paradise of Galilee. All right. What am I trying to say here? Jesus knew that when he came back to this region, his ministry was now going to impact the Tri-Cities. So what he did was anchor in the most fertile place. He anchored in the place where the ministry was going to launch so that everybody from miles around would have access to the King of Glory. I see a window here. I just got to lift up for you so you can look in. <laughs> Jesus' motive was to have access to everybody. He was not just the God of the Jews. Are you listening here? He was not just the homeboy from Capernaum. He was not just interested in Peter and Andrew and James and John's friends in Bethsaida. He wanted to reach everybody along the coastline. And so he strategically placed his ministry in a location where everybody would have access to the city. And you know some of the new beginnings? We're just a baby church. Not even a year old yet. But I see some pointers in here that I think will help us. As we pray about a ministry location, a place to anchor, we we must always be considerate of those who don't have access to Jesus. We must always consider how we position ourselves to be in a location where everyone can come and feel welcome to see Jesus. Are you listening here? We need to be in a place where the rich can come, where the poor can come, where the middle class can come, where the one who speaks English and the one who doesn't speak English can come. We need to be in a location where we are so anchored that everybody knows where to come to see Jesus. Are you with me here? Our search prayers no high and our search prayers no low. And they got three ways going everywhere. But I don't think that's what the Spirit of God is getting at in our text today for us. I think what he's calling us to do is to be a church that's anchored in the Word of God. If you ain't getting the word, guess what? They'll fly to be here. They'll commute to be here. They'll catch the train to be here. They'll go on the internet finding you. They'll check an email. They'll be listening to my radio. If you just say, ain't got in the word. Are you listening here? Only in the word can you find Jesus. Only in the word can you find the teachings of Christ. Only in the word can you find the vision and the mission of Jesus. You've got to be anchored in the word of the Lord. Isn't that powerful? Yes, sir. And that's a mission statement good for every home in here. Your home ought to be anchored in the word of God. You ought not be able to say, come with me and go to church and then go home and live some other kind of way. No, that's living foul. That's living out of bounds. If you are a born again believer, your home needs to be anchored in the word of God. I got three points this morning. I'm going to give you and I'm going to get on out your way. Number one, I want to wrestle with this stuff about the reason I needed Jesus. Number one, in this reason, the people recognized Jesus. Point number one, they recognized Jesus. Point number two, they ran to Jesus. And point number three, they reached out to Jesus. They recognized Jesus, they ran to Jesus, and they reached out to Jesus. Are you going to help me through here? Look at verse 54. The Bible says, As soon, Brother John, as they got out of the boat, the people recognized Jesus. Let me see if I can unpack a little of that. The first thing I see in this text is that the people in this portion of the country or this region, in order to recognize Jesus, they had to first have an encounter with Jesus. Are you with me here? Which implies not only did they have an encounter with Reverend Brown, but they remembered his previous visit. To recognize means to recollect. In other words,